Welcome back to uh, issue number six of the series for making airports for X-Plane. And this one will be called placing lines and lines, I guess, uh, airport lines and regular lines. You'll see why that's an important distinction in the middle, in the minute. And uh, let's uh, go back to the last one, which took almost an hour, but uh, you learned a lot about wet, I hope. And um, this is what's going to make this video much shorter because I don't have to go over copying and uh, splitting and all this stuff again. It works the same for lines as it uh, does for areas like polygons and taxiways. In the meantime, I have placed a lot of uh, polygons and taxiways. Let's uh, get rid of the map here for a second so you can see what I did. Um, have all these taxiways here in place and uh, you can see like I said last time, uh, the taxiways, or actually let's uh, get rid of the, the polygons for a second here. Okay, so these, these are all um, areas where the airplanes will move. And then if I re-enable the polygons, you can see that I made these areas where the cars park and um, where the glide slope antenna sits and everything. I made those with polygons and I also placed some polygons here around the windsock and um, it does look pretty nice. Now here is the area where the parking spot is and if I uh, put back the map again you can see that I try to make, let me um, reduce the transparency a little bit so you can see better. I try to place my polygon so that they slip under the road, so to say, so that there should be a nice, um, well, you know, they, they, they slip in to the road and then uh, you cannot see the, the end of that. So that should be a nice continuous way over here. I just painted under the road. Now, um, this does not always work. Now, look at this area. You can see there's like a, this little oval road here going around. And if I switch the view, we haven't done this before, but uh, it's possible to open street map. You see that this is the road that goes around here. And um, the problem is that X-Plane simplifies these roads. And the way it looks in X-Plane is like this. You can see there's the oval, but it's not very oval. X-Plane made it simpler. It uh, cut the corner, so to say, and it should go down here, but it's cutting straight across. You will see this again and again, whoops, when you make scenery. Um, it's a bit of a problem and um, we'll have to make a decision later on if we want to cut away this road and just make the road out of polygons or if we want to retain this airport road, which I think is nice because you get moving traffic on it and then we just live with it, you know, not being exactly where it is. And we'll just omit some of the cars that would park right here so they don't stand on the road. But hopefully in a future version of X-Plane, this road network will have higher fidelity so it would match a little better of what we placed down here and then we don't have to touch the airport again. Instead, we expect the road to improve and match what's there in real life. Um, so far, so good. Uh, we're done with our polygons and uh, the roads back here they work out nice i checked that so we're good i also uh, placed the little helipad here i made the h with the uh, the white concrete or the almost white concrete um this almost subst or uh, you know this is almost painting with polygons but again this is okay on a small scale i decided to omit the writing on the taxiway here because um a little birdie told me that it doesn't say Sanford Lee anymore. It says Raleigh exec instead over here. But uh, since I can't see this on this uh, picture, I'm not going to do that. And um, I also placed, we should have done that on the very, or the second or third video when we placed the runways. I also placed a helipad here. It's um, being placed with this button placing helipads and you can resize them, make them uh, small or big and rotate them as well. See, uh, now this is the polygon. I'm going to erase that. I 
you know, if you place a helipad, this is the helipad you can see, you know, you can make it bigger or whatever. Control Z to go back. Um, you can pick the surface, asphalt, concrete, dirt, and so on. And you can pick the markings. You know, you can just pick default. That's they're always default. And you get a little circle and an agent site or so. But quite often it doesn't look like the real helipad. So I like to make the helipads myself. In this case, I made them out of a concrete polygon and this white concrete or concrete uh, taxiway and this white concrete polygon on top uh, looks much closer to what it looks in real life. And I just made the helipad transparent. It's important to place a helipad nonetheless because uh, x -Plane needs to know where the helipads are. You can pick those to start out on and um, even if you don't place a ramp start on it, we'll talk about that later, but uh, hopefully in the future uh, the AI and x -Plane will also be able to land off and uh, land and take off at these helipads so we want to place them if there are some in real life. Okay, let's go to what this video is about, it's about placing the markings as uh, they're called when you import your airplane, uh, airport from the scenery gateway. And I deleted all the markings that we had before. We're going to place our own markings now. Now, just analog to the taxiways and polygons, you have two types of markings in X-Plane. One is um, the, the taxi or the airport lines, as they're called officially. They are or taxi lines. They are triggered by clicking on this button. And um, once you've done that, you can pick which one you would like to place. And you get this huge, huge, huge selection again. And uh, the default would be a solid yellow. And it's really easy to place. Click, 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 click. And you can either close them like you would with the polygons or, of course, you can Go click, 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 click. And when you're done, hit return. And then your line is done. Again, as you zoom out, you get the preview. And as you zoom in, it switches to the 3D view, what, uh, exactly what you would have in X-Plane when you fly on this airport. Now, this again is like the taxiway. This line, this airport line would go into the airport dot and you can pick attributes. You can just switch the line. You can make it solid white, for example, if you zoom in or you could make it um, ILS hold wide or whatever. You can just switch uh, happily and again, you can go to none, then it would be invisible. And just like uh, for the polygons, you can switch to the vertex tool and say this node should be solid yellow and um, again you can make a long line and have every segment have a different attribute if you switch the attributes at the nodes and of course you also have um, lights you could make for example this this is what you often have on taxiways those little greenish lights and if you zoom in you can see that there's now a green taxiway center line light if you zoom out you get the preview for that um, edge lights are on uh, one side of them you can always remember that uh, the runway lies on or the the you know the dangerous part as i say lies on the left so if uh, you have a edge line like this let's say this is a taxiway edge line then on the left side as you taxi south on the left side would be the taxiway on the right side would be the um the lights and it's it's especially important to remember when you place uh, a line like right here and you want to you would place it like this from here to there now hit return and you make this a runway hold now you see i went from here to here on the left side should be the dangerous thing the runway but i did it wrong uh, the runway is here on the right side so you can see these teeth so to say they should face the runway they're facing the wrong way how to fix that well i could draw it again but of course there's an easier way you would just uh, reverse it and you can see it switches around and you could do the same thing here if you first pick the vertex tool then click on it this selects the whole line and if you go edit reverse you would have it 
on the other side, so to say. Now, this is pretty much this all there is to know about uh, the lines. Of course, you can hold down Alt and uh, you know enter or you know, add additional nodes. You can move that. You can uh, switch to the marquee tool, move the whole thing. You can rotate just like with a with the polygons and taxiways, it works pretty much exactly the same. Um, and uh, this is totally analog to what we had, uh, what we saw there before. Now, if you also, if you ask yourself now, what's what's going on with the with the polygons? Is there an analog to that? Yes, there is. We also have the lines, and they're just called lines. This is the line tool down here. And um, you can find them in the library, just like you would find the pavement before. You can find the lines. They're right here. And if you open this up, you can see that all these lines uh, have the ending .lin. And um, if you click on something, they also have a little preview down here. And uh, you will see that a lot of them are just the same or analog to the to the airport lines that we had before. Now, why would you place lines instead of the airport lines? Because just like with the um, polygons, you don't have the luxury of picking edge properties or line properties. See, I'm placing a line here, return. And if I zoom in, I get the 3D. That's another thing. If you zoom out, you don't get a preview, really. This is something that they might add later on. But if I choose the vertex tool, pick this node, you can see I cannot pick any properties for this node. I cannot make this part a straight or you know, a white line and this part a yellow one or so like I could for the airport. Well, the, the advantage of this, this guy is that it sits in the DSF and it takes a lot less storage space. Um, I think it also draws faster. So uh, they say that whenever you can, um, when you're making markings that are not used by airplanes, like this is a taxi line that would be used by airplanes, use the regular line for that. But if you uh, have like vehicle path markings, you know, where the, where the fuel trucks would go or so often on bigger airports, you have like a whole road system. This is something that you would want to do with the lines and then you have to you know plan accordingly if uh, you can of course change the property of a line that's not a big deal see i select it and you can see you know, it's not really the property it's the resource this is the the road edge zipper line and if i want to change that to let's say a taxi hold line i click on taxi hold it, the resource is up here Control c to copy over here, Control V to paste, hit return, and it changes. Just analog to the uh, polygons, we could change those as well. And if you change the resource, it works for many, many things, facades, objects, and so on. You will see it works the same thing, the same way you can change uh, the resource and therefore the line as a whole, but again, not a segment. And of course, uh, you can also make those lines turn them into Bezier curves, just like you did with um, the polygons and with the taxiways. Now let's uh, place a line in, uh, you know, in the life, so to say. We, um, when I when I place lines, I like to start out with long, long stretches. Uh, if let's let's start with this one here, I'm going to pick a solid yellow. There are many, many different new lines that we have. We have. Uh, the solid yellow, which is kind of narrow. And then we have the solid um, single taxi wide. It's the same. It's Don't look down here. This is not the preview. You don't get a preview when, when you do these lines. But uh, let's let's place some. See, there's, there's this one. This is the This is the single taxi wide. And if I switch to single solid yellow, you see that it's a lot more narrow, but I think this narrow line is probably what is appropriate for a small airport like that. And when I place lines, I like to stretch or, or make really long stretches of lines. See, this is it's kind of hard to see on this image, but I would start right here. And then I'm assuming that it goes straight all the way over here and I would go right here. Now I have a nice long stretch and um, 
it hopefully should be in the middle. Sometimes the satellite pictures are a little distorted. Uh, sometimes it happens. It looks like this taxiway is wobbly, but you really want to try to make everything straight because as you taxi down here, it looks really weird if, if this is going left and right. I used to start clicking here, then I would click here, click here, because this is where you join these other lines later on. But nowadays, what I do is I make one long straight line. And um, of course, you can continue here, make the curve right here, and it goes here and then probably goes, hard to see, uh, maybe like right here and hit return. And now my line is in place. And um, now I'm going to prepare for these lines to join. So I'm picking the V key. I'm still, I still have this line selected. I hold down Alt. I make a note here. I make a note oops, here and so on. Now, later on, when I want to add these lines, I'm going to, let's uh, collapse this. This is confusing. I'm going back to the line tool and I start from here to maybe here. And then I start from here to here and over here again. Hit return. And now as you zoom in, you see this is not joined up. And we talked about snapping before. This is again what you want to do. You want to snap these together here, snap here. And now this looks good. Now this is, is done and you can rest assured that this is a nice straight line and this uh, taxi line just joins it uh, smoothly. And uh, here's another trick when you have a lot of lines that are supposed to uh, be <laughs> in line with each other. Then I'm uh, what I'm doing is I'll, I make a little helper line. I'm just uh, it doesn't matter. I just you know take something. Let's maybe take a green line. This is this is uh, obviously not the real one. And I zoom in and you can, it's hard to see, but here is the center line of the taxiway. So I'm zooming out again. Oh, center line of the runway, of course. Zooming in and. Uh, where is the center? Hard to see. Oh, there's the little number. So it's right here. You, you'll be able to see that better when you do it yourself. Now I have this line and I go back to the vertex tool. And if I grab this line here, you see, I can move it like this. And um, that's what you want to do. Now it's nice and parallel to the runway. And I pick a spot where I can see uh, these lines and you can see the lines when they when they come out like this they usually don't go down the real you know the center stripe they go a little offset but it looks really weird if, if these are not lining up perfectly with the next ones as you come down the taxiway so I'm I'm placing this I call this a helper line and I'm placing it right here and now all these lines that I can that I will place later on I'm maybe putting it up here way on top this is a real line that goes down here actually I'm selecting all these four, hold down shift, select, drag to markings. Now they're inside markings. Now this line I'm going to lock and I call it helper line. It's like a ruler, so to say. And then I go back to markings. I pick this one and switch back to line, of course, uh, solid yellow. And now I'm going to add this line. You can see it starts maybe over here. So I zoom in all the way. I started right on the green line and it goes to maybe over here. So again, I zoom in right on the green line and then I'll make a little Bezier curve. Click here, another Bezier curve. Click here, zoom in again right in the middle of the green line and it goes to maybe over here. Want to have approximately the same length. So zoom in right again click here, return, and that's it. Now I just click on this note to snap it, snapped. And if I clear away or if I make my helper line invisible, you can see now I have two lines that are nice and straight that line up perfectly with each other and will also line up perfectly with these other ones if I place them on my little helper line. This is, you know, you have to get a little in, in inventive to do this stuff and to um, make things nice. You'll see when you look at your airport and explain, this becomes immediately obvious if uh, these lines are not straight and um, 
that's just a little hint. So basically all you do is now you place your lines. This would be a good example for uh, a regular line, not an airport line that you would do. So I would go back to my lines and uh, this is just a white line white white line so uh, let's see what i have here after a while you'll you'll know these there's a road, road edge black um i want the road edge wide road edge wide see this is a little bit wider than the regular road edge and i'm just going to place it here return and of course go back to the vertex tool to to move it to adjust it and uh now we have a line here you can see it up here and i'll probably do the same thing for the one on the other side of the runway uh, over here i could do another one now remember if i if i click here nothing happens because none of these buttons is selected actually this one is it's just the, the vertex tool if i want to place the line i would have to click either click the line button or it automatically gets selected when i click one of these here it was the same way with the polygons if you go back to vertex you cannot draw another polygon you have to be on the polygon uh, tool button first same with the objects you will later see here's the facades here's the lines the taxiways you have to have the right button selected to draw something if you have the vertex tool selected you can select stuff but you cannot draw something from a new so to say so either click the line now or just click somewhere else if i click here again nothing happens so i have to click somewhere else first and then pick the road edge wide again you see now it comes up and uh, i can do the line and here we go sort it of course make your own little folder i hold down control select these two how do you make a folder we haven't done that before well there's edit and then you can say group control g you'll remember that control g is making a group uh, they're just called group one two three and so on and i'm just calling this lines and uh, this one i'll call taxi li lines and then i'll probably make another one hold short lines or whatever you can sort these you can is even make uh you know put these two groups together go control g again and call this one markings for example so now you have a group called markings and inside this group is the group lines and inside you know and there's also the group taxi lines in there so you get organized keep this nice and tidy without making it you know too uh too many sub layers so to say but give stuff some some meaning um don't just add everything in in, in one spot because you know with a small airport this is not a big deal but once you start getting into bigger airports you'll see that it really really pays to have to stay organized let's say you um, have a lot of polygons and see i have all my polygons in here some concrete some asphalt some this some that now if i look at these polygons and i decide they are too bright and i want to change them well it would be nice if i had a little subsection that's just containing these polygons let's i, I can still do that i can see i select them all now I just selected the nodes that wasn't good so I select them all like this and you can see now they're all selected whoops let me move this down here all the concrete 6L polygons that constitute this uh, circle and these two lines are selected I have some other ones I couldn't have picked them out this one is probably the age of the the helipad but uh, now I have them all selected and now I can move them out of the polygon group or I can make a subgroup and call this one uh, wind sock markings so now this is nice and if I decide that they are too bright then I would just go um, concrete and everything that has concrete in its name would come up i see concrete down here and maybe i pick the concrete five left again i could just pick the resource control copy then i would have to select all these polygons again hold down the shift key click here now they're all selected and i just click one of these down here go control v and now before i hit return i hold down the control key which batch changes them and you can see you know you may, may have seen that they all changed at the same time and um, 
I'm going back because I do like them really bright. So now they're back at 6L, I hope. Hover here. Yes, they're all 6L again. Hover here. And you would also want to change maybe the names here. I could call them uh, Wind Sock Polygons and hold down control. See, now they're all called windsock polygons. It's it's sometimes dangerous if you change the resource without changing the name, because then you say, well, this is a you know 6L. Why is it so dark? But you change the property or the resource and you forgot. Uh, also, this I, I do this a lot for airport lights. I place a lot of tall lights, and then I look at my airport and I say, well, these are too tall. And I batch change them to medium sized or even small ones. And then I forget to change the name and then later on i look at them and they say these are really small but they're tall lights what's wrong here but you know i forgot to change the name as well uh, you don't have to change the name the name is just for you but uh, it helps to stay organized so now i have the windsock markings they're under polygons and i can just close the whole deal again collapse it collapse it and now i have my airport nice and tidy well, there's uh, really one more thing that I want to show you. This uh, has uh, been uh, added also with one of the uh, latest revisions to WED, and that is the possibility to move lines um, proportionally. I would call that. Let's uh, let's do that with a with the lines. Uh, that's that's uh, where we where we would uh, do it mostly. Um, a lot of the airports have uh, big parking spots for the airplanes at the gates and uh, those parking spots often feature markings on the ground that tell the ground crew where to go and where not to go and uh, they would often consist of a white line uh, it might look like um, wrong here Let, it might look like this let's say this is the a no-go area it's a white line you can see i just place it as a line now these lines are often white red or white red white or so so how would you do that now of course you can just go i'm, I'm just going to uh, pick a red line and i just place it right next to this one over here over here over here hit return and then i can go vertex tool and just you know move it right next to it and, and it would look nice like with nice like this but i'd have to do it again and again and especially on a big airport this is uh, cumbersome so um how to do this easier i would pick this line i hit Control shift duplicate and it doesn't work because i am in camtasia i get this little thing again so uh, let's use this one duplicate now did it work? No, duplicate in place. This is what I want to do. Now I have this duplicate. Now, if I hold down the shift key and grab my line that I just duplicated and I move out, you see what happens? It gets bigger and smaller proportionally. And uh, if I zoom in and hold down, then I can move out, move in, and I can move it until it just about touches right here. And if I check over here, see it touches again now all i need is i need the red line property control copy control paste hit return and i have a perfectly parallel line all around and i could do this again for example i could hit v grab this line hit duplicate edit duplicate in place and zoom in Oh, that did not work. That did not work at all. What did what happened here? Oops. <laughs> oh, you know what? I said duplicate and moved to Stanford. This is not what I wanted. I'm going back control seven to get back here. Uh, click here and try this again. Duplicate in place. Here we go. And now I hold down the shift key and I move this out. And you see now I have this nice white red white line now this is one thing now some other times you may find yourself let's uh, move this this uh, this line over here uh, you may find that you placed a line but that's not what you wanted you you really want to change this into you know an, an 
uh, one of these other lines, the airport lines. How can you do that? Of course, you could just redraw the same thing, but you don't want to. You uh, have to select it, and now you can go convert to. This is also a very, very powerful new tool that we got. And here I can convert it to an airport line marking. See, it doesn't have any attributes, but I can change that, of course, make it broken yellow. And now it's an airport line, and I can just like before, uh, you know, switch the the properties here. And um, of course, it doesn't work because this is the end of it. It's node number four, so it doesn't control uh, any properties. But if I change this one, you can see that, you know, now it's an airport line, and um, gives me all the luxury of uh, setting properties again. And this works the same for polygons and taxiways too. If I uh, have, uh, let's unlock these. If I have this taxiway, it's a, it's a concrete taxiway and I could obviously also convert it to um, a draped polygon. I can also convert it to an airport line marking. So sometimes uh, let's say I wanna make it, uh, turn it into a polygon now it's a uh, pavement concrete one dark. This is fine, but I still wanted to have an edge. Now, how would I do that? Well, I'm going to duplicate the whole thing. Edit duplicate in place. Now I have two polygons right on top of each other. One of these polygons, I would convert to an airport line marking. And this airport line marking, I could make solid white. Now see, I have a white line around my polygon without having to manually place it. And um, obviously this is very nice. Of course, uh, I don't want an airport line marking for this white polygon, or for this uh, white line, because it takes more space and it draws uh, slower. So I'm going to convert this again into a, well, it is into a line. So here we go. And it's a line now, it doesn't have any uh, resources, you know, wet didn't know what to turn this into. So I'm going to pick my road edge again, copy the resource, control C, add it here, control V, return. And now I have a line around my polygon and you can switch back and forth between stuff. This is really convenient, really great. Uh, you can do intricate line work with it and um, there's really uh, nothing you can't do with this whole thing.